Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my living room before and after slash living room tour. And I've wanted to do this video for a really long time. I've been putting it off because I've been waiting until it's finished. But what I've realised is that I don't think it will ever be finished. I think that's kind of the thing with a home is that it's never quite finished. And some of the bigger things that I thought I wanted to do, like put pictures on the wall, I don't think we're going to get done now before the baby comes. And I wanted to get this video done because I'm just worried that I'll never do it otherwise. So apologies a small apology because i wanted this video to be really like swishy and fancy <laughs> kind of like my kitchen tour i said the same thing but the reality is i'm home alone by myself with the tripod pretty heavily pregnant and out of breath so this is going to be more of a casual style but i think you guys just want to see the living room and see the before and after and hear me chat through some of our decisions and stuff so that's what i'm gonna do hopefully it will all turn out okay <laughs> So I haven't prepped at all for this video. Our living room, lounge, don't really understand the difference between the two if I'm honest. This is exactly how it always is. I haven't like styled the shelves, especially for this video. I haven't bought anything new, especially for this video. This is it, so I wanted to keep it as real as possible. And it's not perfect. Like I said, I don't think it ever will be. But I'll talk you through as I go, things that I imagine changing in the future. So as you guys know, if you follow my vlogs, if you watched any of my home renovation videos, which I will link above if you haven't yet seen, because I think you see more of the process then, our lounge is open plan attached to the kitchen area. And that's something I was really looking for in a home. I love that open plan feel. I know maybe when I have kids, it won't be ideal. We could always put a dividing door between the two rooms if we wanted to. To, but for now I really love the kind of open sociable space but I did want to try and make them feel like slightly different spaces and I don't want to kind of counteract the openness of them but I thought it would be nice to make the lounge a more kind of cozy evening space because this is we really only sit in the lounge in the evening when we're watching TV or having dinner. So the rest of the downstairs is all painted white in um, Farrow and Ball Wevet. The kitchen is a dark blue, which is uh, matched with Farrow and Ball Hague blue. And then to tie in with that, we decided to paint the lounge Hague blue from Farrow and Ball. That's something I knew from pretty early on. I think it's a really gorgeous, cozy colour. It's like a dark blue, but with this really nice green undertone to it. It's very different from any other paint. And this room is north facing. It's at the front of the house. And I think I read, I think it was Mad About the House, I read in her book that she said, embrace the darkness. If a room is already dark, don't paint it white and try and make it bright because it would just look dull. She said to just kind of go with it and I think she's totally right. At this time of day when it's a little bit brighter, it looks really nice and then from the afternoon onwards, it's a really dark room and it just looks inviting and cozy and I love it. I think the color works so well. So it kind of divides the two spaces, having this kind of dark blue here and then the white there. You can see behind me, it's brighter in that part of the house. It flows perfectly. A lot of people were saying, why would you paint them different why would you try and make it look like a different room when it's not but I really think it works and we painted the entire room including like the back of the door all the built-in shelves and cupboards and um, we didn't do the ceiling or the kind of coving we left that white because I think it kind of um, makes it less I think it would have been too heavy <sighs> well, I'm gonna have to do lots of breaks in this video so let me insert some before clips of what this room looked like now this is not the original before like when we bought the house because um i can't put those in for like privacy reasons but originally when we got it it was like crazy crazy like red stripy wallpaper on this wall yellow stripy wallpaper on that wall and as soon as we moved in we just painted white over the wallpaper because we like, couldn't even handle it at all so these clips you're going to see now are when it was painted white. It did have some quite a nice original wood flooring, but we couldn't keep it because we were extending. And it had this crazy like iron fireplace, which a lot of you were upset that I was getting rid of, but it wasn't like a real original one. It was something the previous owners had put in and it just wasn't to our taste. So apart from that, you can kind of see it was just kind of a plain room, really. Obviously, it has all the features that I really wanted, like the fireplace, the um, what they called the bits either side of the fireplace, like the alcove is that what it's called i can't remember and i just knew it had so much potential so i think i'm gonna just kind of take you around the room vloggy style maybe the main bulk of the costs when doing this room were the paint expensive fireball paint the shutters the the labor work like the decorators 
the builders who built the shelves and cupboards for us. We were very lucky and we have had a lot of the big furniture items gifted, whether that was recently when moving into this house or years ago when moving into the flat. But everything has been picked out by me. Nothing has just kind of been sent, hoping that I'll like it. Everything's been picked, depending on the room. And yeah, okay, let me show you around the room. So the first thing I knew I definitely wanted were some shutters. We had some in our previous flat. So we got these down here and in our bedroom upstairs. And I think it makes such a difference, especially in a period property. It looks so smart from the outside. Um, so these just go like that if you want to close them or open. And we've just got them in white and I absolutely love them. We got all the way from the top to the bottom. I didn't get the ones where there's like three because I thought there'd be too much going on, but I think these work perfectly. So just below the shutters and the bay window is this massive love seat, which we got when we first moved into the house before we'd done it up, before we decorated. It's from a brand called Arlo and Jacob. And it took us a while to pick the right one. We wanted something really comfortable. We wanted something that more than one person could fit onto just so we can get as much space as possible when we have friends around or family so you can definitely fit two people on here but it's called a snuggler so you do have to snuggle up and I just love the color it was hard to choose but this room is very blue and I think it goes well and it's it's kind of like a velvet finish it's so soft so that's really nice these are new from Habitat I picked those up when I was in there recently I just thought orange goes really nice with blue and adds a little pop of color there as well and I think this is a cashmere throw from Zara home I've got lots of throws going on so next to this little snuggler on the right is this hilarious giraffe table let me show you this is from a brand called Amara they reached out to me after I bought something else from their website which I'll show you in a minute and they asked if I'd like to pick something from the website I waited ages for this to come back in stock because I thought it was so special and like a one-off opportunity to be able to get something crazy like this why not so it's literally a gold giraffe where's the little head there it is with a glass circular table on top and then i've just got a few things on here like a little dip tea candle this is actually oops oh god that's obviously what i put in there to like prop it up this is like a fake little succulent but it looks good and a coaster i think that's my anthropology that's the speaker for our tv and to the other side of the snuggler is this plant I, I think we just got this from ikea actually it's a palm um and the the pot as well is from ikea it's just it's nice for like an empty space it just adds a bit of life and greenery and this lamp is from aldi which is such a find i think erica davies told everyone about this and we all ran out and got it it's got like a marble base which is really nice this rug down here that we are standing on in my socks is from west elm um, we had a really nice rug before that we loved, but it didn't fit the room, it was too small. So we got this one from West Elm, and I just really love it. It adds a bit of texture, a bit of something different. It's got a little bit of pink in the middle, but it's just amazing. I would highly recommend it. It doesn't show dirt that easily, and yeah, we're really happy with it. It's really soft under your feet as well. So if I show you this side of the room against the wall, the colours are coming up very strange. Um, this always happens on camera. The sofa is not purple, I promise. It's called... I think it was called something licorice. It's a very, very dark blue and it is different to the color on the wall, but it works in real life, I promise you. It's basically just like a darker shade of blue. It just looks really weird on camera. We got this quite recently from Loaf. We're so happy with it. It took us ages to pick a sofa. We wanted something really deep and comfortable. It's got this kind of, um... oh man, sorry. My brain is just not working, but I can't remember what that's called, but I really like it. We wanted something deep. I wanted something so when you sit down, you can put your legs up. Like that's really important to me on a sofa. It's so comfortable and um, the fabric is called Clever Velvet. So I was quite worried obviously having kids. Is velvet gonna be a nightmare? I'm sure it still will, but we've tested so much and literally if you spill anything on this, it just kind of collects. It's a bit like if you put oil and water together and it just wipes off. So, so far so good, but we'll see with baby sick and baby poo. But I really am so happy with this sofa. I love the low back. I wanted a sofa with arms on the side so you can kind of lean on them. And they're quite hard to find actually but I, I just love that you can like rest your arm like this on the back of the sofa so so happy with it and on the sofa i've got these yellow cushions from soho home and then these cushions which i got in stockholm from a brand i can't remember i'm sorry i don't think it has a label and this is what i was kind of waiting for because above the sofa i was going to do a gallery wall and i recently kind of freaked out and changed my mind and now i'm not sure if i want to do a gallery wall i literally collected all the prints for it and now i'm just like oh maybe i just want to have like three 
prints instead or maybe I want a painting I'm not sure so I don't think we're gonna get this done anytime soon it's just too it's too much of a big deal it's really intimidating so that's the kind of sofa area and as you can see like I said we painted the door exactly the same color so when it's shut it will blends in which I really like we've got the kind of black matte black um, light switches and the brass handles these are from Saxon Locks, I think it's called. Um, it's the Frugalities family company. I'll link it down below. We had like, the doors kind of restored, sanded and painted and treated and looked after and everything. So they look really nice and all the kind of, all the details are brass, which I think makes a real difference. So I'm gonna step back so you can see kind of in context. If I pan over to this side of the room, we have another chair here. So you can kind of fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people maybe. This chair is also from West Elm. We had this in our flat and love it. It's so comfortable. It's a light gray, it goes with everything. And then on there, I've got like a Zara home cushion, a Soho home cushion and an H&M throw. And then this poof my mum bought for me for my 30th, I think, from made.com. I love the blush tones and I think the blush goes really well with the navy. It's funny because yellow and orange go well with blue, but so does pink. But pink and yellow and orange don't go that well together, but it kind of works, I think. I don't know, someone commented once saying there's too many different colours, but it's fun, why not? So that comes in really handy. We often put that there, sit on the sofa and put our legs on it. And then this is our coffee table. We had this in the flat as well. We've had it for years and I absolutely love it, but we do feel like we need to change our coffee table. Whenever my nephews and my niece come around and they're running around, we are terrified of the corner of this, like the glass. And I know you can get protectors, but they're very sharp corners. But as well as that, it just takes up a lot of space. And we're thinking when we have a baby, we're gonna want like space on the floor to like put them on a play mat. And when they start crawling, it's just, it's big table. And I feel like something round or oval or even like nesting tables that we can push to the side would be handy. A lot of people recommended getting like a poof, but we often use this table to put our dinner on or take away. So we're still thinking about it, but I love this table and I don't know what I'll do with it. I don't want to kind of get rid of it. I just want to store it somewhere until we like have our adult life back. I love it so much. It's glass, steel and wood, and it goes with a lot of other furniture we have in the house. It's also got these two drawers which are amazing for storage. And I've also just got like a tray, a book and some coasters. I haven't really like styled it up much, but this is what it looks like day to day. So let me pan above the coffee table and show you what this side of the room looks like. Oh, I love it. I just love this view. So we knew we wanted built-in cupboards and shelves. I'd seen a picture on Pinterest, but I also just had a really clear idea of what I wanted. I knew we'd want our TV worked into it somewhere and I want it to look really smart and I want it to tie in with the kitchen area. So we asked for our builders to make this. We asked for shaker style. This is all made out of like MDF and then painted. So shaker style, which is these kind of edges. And then I asked for this kind of hole here so that when we use our skybox, we don't have to open the cupboard to use the remote. That was strangely important to me. So we've got a skybox and our speaker there. There's nothing interesting in these cupboards. It's literally full of like random things and Xboxes and stuff, but lots of storage for when we need it. Then we've got our TV, which is mounted onto the wall using like a mount we got from Amazon. And I think that looks really smart because then you can't see the wires and stuff. They built that into the cupboards behind. So they run down into there, which I think is really clever. And then I've got two shelves, which are pretty much bare. I've just got some photo albums, like empty photo albums. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna put up there. I'm sure they'll start filling up one day, but I haven't like had the time or energy to make these shelves look good yet. So over here, we've got a big round mirror. This I absolutely love, I got it from Oliver Bonus. Took me a while to work out what I wanted here, but I think a round mirror works really nicely. And it's just got no edging to it, so it's a very simple mirror. And then below that is this concrete shelf. So originally we wanted to have a proper kind of fire surround, but actually we didn't realize that our chimney breast, oh my God, I'm gonna have to sit down. <laughs> our chimney breast is actually quite narrow. So any fire surrounds that we found online just wouldn't fit and they would also weren't safe to use with a wood burner, which I'll talk about in a moment. So that kind of threw us really because I didn't want, a lot of people put like a plank of wood there, but to me that's 
quite countryside living, it doesn't really go with my style. So eventually I found this concrete shelf from Amara Living. This is why they got in contact with me, because I bought this and they saw. But this is just a really simple concrete shelf. I think it looks so smart, it goes so well with the blue. It ties in with our kitchen where we've got a concrete splashback and I'm just so happy with it. I think it works much better than a fire surround. And it's nice because at Christmas you can kind of put decorations on and stuff. For now we've just got these two things. This I bought in Ibiza. This is um, a Bella Freud, is it Bella Freud candle? That's kind of just sitting there. And then below the shelf is the wood burner. Now this was more for Rich. Rich grew up with a wood burner. It was very important to him. I grew up with a gas fire, which we kind of only really ever used a bit in the winter, but Rich really wanted a wood burner. I'd heard of this company Stoke Limited and they got in touch and they were amazing to work with. It's all very kind of efficient and clean and we have to use like special wood but I mean I think we'll probably only really use this when it's very cold in the winter but it looks amazing and they kind of kind of came and did the whole fireplace for us and sorted out and made it super safe and cleared the chimney and it was a really interesting experience I'm pretty sure I vlogged it if you want to check the renovation vlogs but this looks amazing when it's on so we've got some little wood in there I think that's from home sense or something maybe it's from Zara home I can't really remember. And I've just got, these are more for decoration. When we're burning the fire, we have to move all of this out of the way. But that's from West Elm. That's a big candle from Jo Malone. And then we had to have this as well to make the fire safe, which at first I was like, oh, I don't know if I love that because it's like on top of the floor. It's not smooth, but actually it was one of those things I cared about at the time. And now I'm like, it looks great. It looks fine. And it's super safe. So really happy with the fire area. I just think it looks so smart and so nice. You can see a reflection in the mirror of the light. So we had this rose already. Again, a really nice original feature. We wanted to keep that. And this light is from Heels. I went to Heels and chatted to them and went through loads of different lighting for the house. And this is the one we chose for the lounge. It's brass. It's a Technically a chandelier. It's really cool. It gives off a really nice warm orangey light in the evening. It actually was longer and my builder ended up cutting this bit for me and making it shorter and I absolutely love it. So before I completely lose my breath, let's just talk about this right hand side of the shelves. These little handles, by the way, we had no handles for ages. I only got these recently. They're from Downings and Reynolds, I think it's called. We were gonna get these for the kitchen, but apparently because they're textured, people say they do get quite dirty but they're perfect for in here where we don't kind of open these cupboards that often. And then on these shelves, I've just got some like photo albums, some room spray, a little print there, books. This, this is a little light that we turn on the evening from heels. Again, concrete, really nice, massive diptyque candle. Photo albums, these are all from Paper Chase and I use my label maker from Amazon. Books, a random vase and nothing much else. So I really should properly style these shelves I feel like they could look a lot better, but like I said, for now, it's fine. And then up there is our like carbon monoxide reader for the fire. I just think overall, as a space, I really love it. It's really cozy and homely, but it's kind of trendy and modern at the same time. It's somewhere I really enjoy spending my time. If anyone has an opinion, by the way, on what to do with this wall, whether I should just have one big painting or like three simple prints or do the gallery wall with loads of different prints like I'd planned, please let me know. I'm trying to think if I've forgotten to mention anything. I'm really happy with the colour palette of the kind of blues and warm tone like yellows and pinks. I think they work really nicely together. And yeah, I would just say be brave. If you're thinking about going dark with wall colour, just do it because this is the one thing people walk in and they're like, wow, they like love the colour. It has kind of chipped a little bit in places, especially on the shelves and stuff, you'll find that it chips, but who really cares? It's going to wear over time. It's lasted really well on the walls. I went for a modern emulsion paint, which has a slight sheen to it. I think the matte paints in Farron Ball are not that practical in terms of getting fingerprints on the wall. And also because it's got a slight sheen, it makes the room look bigger when light hits the wall. So I would definitely recommend the modern emulsion finish. And I think someone once asked whether we used Wevit, which is the white, on everything. And we, we did. So not just the walls, but we used it on the ceilings and anywhere where there's white. I think it's quite good to be consistent with one white. Otherwise, it starts to look a bit kind of funny. I think you've got like an off-white on the ceiling and a pure white on the walls. Let me know if you guys have any questions because I feel like I've probably missed quite a few things or I could just answer them in the comments down below but definitely go check out my renovation vlogs if you didn't watch those because you'll see more of like a gradual process thank you also for being so patient with me during this like third trimester i feel like my content's like 
going a little bit like you know it's not the highest quality it's been a lot of you have said that you've like loved my attitude throughout this pregnancy so that's good i feel like i'm probably the best version of myself but my content is just not as like fancy maybe as it used to be but i'm trying my best and i knew that you guys would like this video kind of no matter what the style really so thank you very much for that and um i'll see you guys in my next video thanks for watching bye